Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Eighteen-year-old uh, Maura Burke has uh, been under the care of the resources of the dental school for over a year now. Uh, she had a combination of problems that have required uh, the resources of uh, about as many clinical disciplines and diagnostic disciplines as we have uh, here in the dental school. Uh, Maura has a, uh, a family history of dental difficulty uh, that's rather interesting. This has uh, the diagnosis uh, of uh, amelogenesis imperfecta uh, a uh, familial problem that has a variety of uh, genetic uh, uh, expressions, and we'll ask her a little bit about it. Uh, Maura, did, uh, when did you first notice a problem with your teeth? Uh, my dentist noticed it oh, around the, the tooth problem. Mm -hmm. uh, around the time I began getting my permanent teeth in, mm -hmm. he noticed that I didn't have any enamel. You were under a, a dental specialist care at that time, a children's dentist, I yes. believe. Mm -hmm. And then as you grew up, you were uh, under the care of another dentist who also had some worries about you. Yes. That, right? Now this uh, problem of the thin enamel, uh, what other members of your family had that trouble? My mother has it, and two of my brothers, a 16-year-old and a 9-year-old have it. Mm -hmm. Are their teeth uh, intend to be soft or uh, somewhat uh, irregular? Yeah, and uh, the older one, his teeth are very small and mm -hmm. they're very worn down. The younger one has just gotten his permanent, so they're pretty mm -hmm. big still. So they, uh, ha they've abraded down rather rapidly. Mm -hmm. And I think you said that some of the more uh, remote members beyond your immediate family also had a story of this sort. Yes, some of my mother's uh, first cousins and a couple of her brothers, I believe, had it. So we have uh, then uh, a family history of uh, a problem uh, with uh, odontogenesis, and uh, this was only one of several problems that uh, brought Mora to us. Uh, in addition to this difficulty, which we'll show in greater detail later on, uh, she had a disharmony in her jaws, which brought a malrelationship uh, between her maxilla and mandible uh, that we can review in, uh, with the help of some slides that were taken uh, a little over a year ago. Uh, <clears throat> here we see a front face uh, slide indicating the rather uh, elongated dimension uh, in the lower portion of the face. Uh, the uh, lips tend to be uh, rather uh, protrusive, particularly in the maxilla. And as we uh, look at a profile shot, we can see once again that the mandible uh, seems to be dependent, hung down. Uh, there is an excessive amount of activity in the musculature of the lower lip. Uh, the lower lip seems to be stretching in order to make contact in closing the mouth. Uh, this is all uh, due to an underlying foundational problem of skeletal uh, disorder in which we can see here the degree of open bite that was present. Uh, this uh, also depicts the degree uh, of hypoplasia and uh, defective enamel on the tooth surfaces, but one can see the extreme uh, open bite uh, that was present, the uh, tongue, We'll talk a little bit later, perhaps, about the role of the musculature as an etiologic factor in the production of this uh, anterior open bite. But one can see in the lateral uh, view the disparity that was present, the complete lack of function, the only functional contact being back here in the molars, uh, and uh, a total uh, absence of any dental contact to be functional. This is a uh, Panorex uh, radiograph that was just part of the rather detailed analysis we'll hear about in a few minutes. 
Uh, it shows the congenital absence of a second premolar uh, that made uh, that particular site in the mandible an attractive target uh, for some of the later surgical considerations. Once again, the functional contact only on the second molars uh, is evident in this uh, young lady who was 17 years old at that time. This is a lateral cephalogram. Uh, you will see this in greater detail. It is only one of the several methods uh, that are used in diagnosis. Uh, in the operating room then about a year ago, we see our patient <clears throat> under general anesthesia and uh, one of the approaches surgically to the modifications of uh, the jaw segments. Uh, we can see uh, a vertical incision made here and the outlines of two cuts made to the lateral maxillary wall uh, to remove a segment of bone as uh, this posterior maxillary segment becomes mobilized as a unit uh, to intrude and to tilt upward as one of its movements. The only part of, the, of both jaws that is not uh, changed in its spatial relationship uh, uh, is the anterior maxillary segment. Uh, all others are uh, uh, transformed in their spatial relationship. We'll look at the uh, mobilization of this uh, posterior maxilla and we can see that this side has been uh, developed so it will intrude as contrasted to the opposite side uh, which has not as yet been surgerized. In the approach to the mandible, a submandibular approach was used. The cuts were made uh, through the uh, area of the retained primary tooth where the second bicuspid was missing uh, and then the mandible was split forward uh, beneath the canal level so that it could be slid and advanced anteriorly as the mandible was lengthened in the body region. The inferior alveolar neurovascular bundle uh, was stretched uh, along that segment. Here we see a post-operative uh, panoramic x-ray that shows probably as well as any other view uh, what has been achieved. Uh, the gaps that are here represent the half thickness of the mandible for the elongation. Uh, the posterior maxillary segments have been intruded superiorly. Uh, the segments of the mandible have been secured by circumferential wires which have been passed around uh, a splint <coughs> to stabilize then this elongated condition of the mandible. The mandible has then been held up to the maxilla, closing the anterior open bite, relating the uh, splint to this anterior stable maxillary segment, and carrying the posterior maxillary segments superiorly and holding them there. In order to maintain intermaxillary fixation, a suspension wire then has been placed around each zygomatic arch. And this has been, been, been attached to the splint. And in that way, for six weeks, which the patient usually finds rather long, uh, this is the condition of intermaxillary fixation. Here is the uh, template registration of splint uh, in an intermaxillary uh, fashion. Uh, the circumferential wires stabilizing the mandibular segments to it. Uh, this is one of the suspension wires coming down from the zygomatic arch. Uh, this is another wire through the anterior nasal spine. And in this manner, the jaws were held in position during healing. As the splint was removed, these are elastics that were used for training in the early excursions of the mandible in its new relationship. There is also a little bit of uh, lateral uh, deviation to this particular uh, segment uh, which uh, changed as time went on. Here we see the later phases of healing. This is a scar line here and uh, you can see the problems that exist now 
for uh, restoration, not only of these edentulous uh, spaces, but the other problems that relate to uh, availability of foundations for reconstruction. Here is, uh, again, a post-operative view where the appliance is gone, and uh, we will uh, see a profile here, and we'll see our patient later showing this change in facial dimension, uh, anteriorly a much more composed uh, orbicularis oris uh, situation. Note the uh, abrasion and the shortness of these crowns that you'll see in a moment. Let us look at the lateral post-operative cephalogram that really uh, is the proof of uh, what was accomplished at the time of surgery. This is an immediate post-operative uh, cephalogram and we see some of those wires that were described in position. This is a circumferential wire around the symphysis area holding that splint in, in place. We see the uh, molar teeth moved upward with the posterior segments bilaterally. Uh, there's been a decrease uh, in this mandibular plane angle that was discussed as the open bite was closed. Now there are many ways to attack the problem of open bite. Uh, this was a particular one uh, which was selected for the individual problems of this patient, which you'll remember are very significant so far as uh, dental rehabilitation is concerned. Which, having reviewed this rather extensive program uh, for uh, Miss Burke, uh, We'll uh, have a word with her about her recollections uh, of the uh, period in the hospital and that uh, <laughs> intermaxillary fixation uh, period, having your jaws wired together. Uh, I presume it wasn't very easy. Did you lose some weight? In oh, yeah. <laughs> about how much did you lose? Oh, I guess about 15 pounds, I guess. Mm -hmm. and gained it all back. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what else do you remember? Uh, was it uh, painful? Uh, for a long period of time? Uh, uh, not really. For about a couple weeks, uh, my jaws kind of ached. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, uh, most of the time, it didn't really hurt at all. Sometimes the wires felt like they were pulling, and they hurt a little bit, but that was about all. What about the numbness in the lip? Was that quite numb after the surgery? Oh, yeah. it was. My lip was numb, and my whole chin like underneath my lip mm -hmm. was numb and it's it was numb for quite a while longer than six months <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's still right now I've pretty much gotten all the feeling back I think good now uh, you do have at least for the first time an ability to contact your front teeth and uh, are you uh, able to bite into things a little bit anyway oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really really well. Which you hadn't been able to do before. No, I used my tongue. Well, let us uh, just have a look inside your mouth and see where the jaw relationship is. And uh, I'll try to slide these retractors in position. Now, if you'll just close together, I'll have them. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Now we see the uh, restored functional relationship in the anterior. Uh, one can see uh, the temporary uh, crowns uh, and uh, space, spacing bridges that Dr. Yeaman has here. Just open, Maura. Uh, in the lower arch, uh, these uh, are in phases of uh, construction. And uh, now close again. So we have uh, a changed relationship of uh, all of the segments of the mandible except uh, the maxillary six anterior pre-maxillary region. Open again, close again. Slide your lower jaw forward now and back. Forward again, back. And move it from side to side. One can see a full range of excursions of the mandible, the, the muscles of mastication having a complete uh, uh, range of normalcy and when she has a little more contact of uh, functional coronal surfaces the posterior teeth uh, things will be a little better off. Maura I wonder if you'll turn now I'd like to demonstrate uh, one side uh, the um, scar here beneath the uh, inferior border of the mandible and back toward me again uh, the other one on this side these are kept 
in a fold in the neck and are becoming uh, less conspicuous and eventually uh, they will fall in and will not be uh, seen at all. You can see, I believe, the if we are able to go back to recall the extreme length of this uh, lower half of the face, that the uh, upper lip is now uh, draped more naturally across the anterior, and because the uh, mandible has been brought forward, there is less tension on the lower lip. There's been a reduction in the activity uh, of the mentalis and other uh, uh, inferior labial musculature, so that we have gained a great deal. And I'm sure that when the uh, final coronal reconstruction is set, she's going to have uh, a happy dental situation as a result of the combined efforts uh, in planning. Uh, first, uh, the oral pathologists who know something about uh, amelogenesis imperfecta and gave us some clues there. Uh, our maxillofacial uh, prosthodontic section that uh, was of great assistance in the treatment planning uh, and so far as cephalometric analysis and diagnostic casts are concerned. Our perio department that uh, exposed more of the uh, crowns of these uh, short teeth so that uh, Dr. Yeaman in the graduate operative section uh, now has an opportunity to rebuild uh, the dental structures for Morris Future. And we thank you so much for coming out today. Thank you. <laughs>